What's up, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I want to show you something. This is actually called the front row camera. It's a wearable camera. You kind of wear it like a pendant necklace or a clip onto the shirt. Uh, it's meant for live streaming and recording things, I think a couple hours. I have seen a bunch of reviews of this camera on YouTube and there's a number of them out there, but none of those really gave me all the answers I was looking for. So this review might be in a, a going into excruciating detail. I apologize for that if you don't want to see a lot of detail. But a couple things that I wanted to know is, I think this will record a 2.7K, so high def, has both uh, optical and electronic image stabilization. And I really wanted to see is the resolution, you know, the colors, the lighting, the white balance, um, the, the image stabilization, does all of that really work, you know, where it's going to be useful, like better than a GoPro or better than just the camera on my phone? Uh, because there's a lot of times I want to capture a lot of video without having my camera right in front of me you know, or up to my face, because that looks like a creeper thing. But, you know, you don't know what footage you're going to want. And, you know, out walking or riding a horse or driving a car or uh, touring a museum or whatever it might be. And so I really wanted to get some footage of it, find out particularly how good that optical image stabilization is compared to the stabilization that's built into my iPhone. I also want to test it on uh, wearing it on as a pendant on the, the basically the kind of the paracord necklace type of thing as well as clipped on to my you know shirt or backpack strap to see if maybe you know physically clipping it on makes it uh, any better and basically my disclosure on that is I paid for this front row camera so I'm assuming that a lot of the videos out there um, which are obviously much bigger channels, were basically sponsored that they provided this camera for free. So I bought this. It's a $400 camera. I'll throw that out there right now. It's a pretty expensive camera, so I'm expecting a lot. So I hope I'm not disappointed. All right, guys. So I've got my front row camera right here. And as you can see, it's on the lanyard. And this may now be the most tested product I've ever had before I've done the review. A lot of times I'm unboxing and reviewing it live, but uh, this thing has gotten a ton of use and overall, uh, it, man, it's intriguing. Um, I'm, I'm uh, just a breath away from saying, man, I love it. Uh, I, do, I do really, really like it. There are some things that would kind of put me over the edge to say really, really love it. But in terms of what it is and what it's supposed to be used for, this is definitely the best out there. So that's the preview. Spoiler alert. I'm going to give um, some pretty good good marks to this thing. And what I want to do here is because there's so much stuff to say, I'm going to roll in some footage that I've taken with it and taken of it uh, as I'm talking through it. But I'm going to really go kind of lightning uh, speed. I'm going to go rapid fire through the things that I love, the things that I don't love, and then kind of my summation here. So first of all, uh, what I do love is this amazing form factor. It's uh, like a little teardrop, it's a little circle, it's very um, thin, it's aluminum, and you can wear it around your neck. And in terms of like a wearable camera that is really uh, stealth, this is the best one out there. And because this one is black, it also blends in pretty well. They also make a couple other colors, which I don't think are gonna be as, as uh, like stealth, but one thing about wearing this, especially on a dark shirt or sweater, pe most people don't really give it a second look. It looks a little weird that a dude is kind of wearing a big, like, uh, Flavor Flav necklace, but it doesn't make people feel uncomfortable. When you're going around and shooting video with your camera or your smartphone, people just kind of, it's its a little, like, icky feeling. Even though there, a lot of people won't stop you, some, I have had people say, hey, hey, don't shoot me, you know, kind of a thing, which is a little weird, but... You know, if you wanted to shoot a lot of video without just kind of making people like, uh, you know, aware that you're shooting it, this is the right one. Uh, there's also uh, rumors, or at least on their website, I've seen uh, another version of this coming out, which I haven't seen yet. It looks like a little clip, and I can't remember if they call it like the director or something, but I really thought that was interesting, but I haven't heard anything about it yet. Okay, the next thing I really love beyond, beyond the form factor is that this is the highest resolution one that exists. And I, hopefully, let me see if I can show you here, that uh, a lot of these cameras don't have, oh, let's call it like amazing resolution. And um, in fact, a lot of them are like 1080p. Now this one, I will tell you, doesn't quite get up to 4K, but it does get pretty high. Well, I guess it does get into 4K at four by three, you know, so it's kind of a manipulated 4K, um, but the 2.7K does, uh, capture it in kind of the widescreen mode that you'd expect. I, I, I wouldn't really use 4x3, I guess you could, especially if you crop it, but then you're not really getting the full 4K. So 2.7K, now I don't have it to update it to the latest, latest firmware, because I have too many videos on here to actually update it, 
but uh, 2.7K is really, really great. In fact, like I said, my issue with a lot of these wearable cameras is that many of them um, only shoot up to 720 or uh, 1080p sometimes, you know, if you're lucky. And then some of them are much lower resolution. So that's just kind of a... That, that's kind of a showstopper right there for me because 720p just isn't going to cut it. I can live with 1080p. 2.7K gives me more options, kind of keep, continues to um, you know, match some of the resolution of things I'm showing. 4K would be even better, but I get that you know the size and everything is, is, is kind of rough. Now, I will say I do love the resolution and the screen on this thing. Look at this. You get the circular LCD. That is really, really cool. I love that. I don't know why circular LCDs aren't around more. Now for uh, controlling the functions on here, it's pretty good. I can slide over here and I get to the camera uh, videos that I've shot. Uh, this is the home button. It's a permanent home button down on the bottom. If I slide this way, I get the camera. Woo, woo, and that, that is pretty wicked cool. I also have, let's see if we can go back here to the home button, and it's just kind of nice. It's very, very responsive. It's Android based. Uh, you know, I, I really love it. The, the display feels good. It feels like Gorilla Glass. The, the hardware feels good. And just from a standpoint of usability, I mean, it's really easy to navigate and feels, and the resolution on this, I don't know if you can see that, but it is tremendous if I really zoom in on it. Um, I'm not sure if it is a retina display. You can kind of see, you know, some of the some of the various pixels starting to show up on when I'm zooming in there. But um, for what this is, man, it, it, the, the resolution is outstanding. So it doesn't feel cheap at all. And the navigation is pretty cool. If I go down here is where I get kind of this pull down menu. I can get to uh, the display and volume. I can get to the other settings. Um, as you can see, I've got an update that needs to be updated right there. So you just got a lot of things connected to your Wi-Fi network battery indicator up there so that's great now i want to say on this battery indicator this thing charges fast uh that's one of the things i really love is is i guess you can discharge the battery uh pretty quickly i don't know if you'll get full two hours of, of recording on it obviously the screen will go blank but it recharges really really quickly i don't know how long it takes you know i i'd, I'd actually say it probably recharges completely in 20 minutes um and that's pretty awesome it's much faster than a, a smartphone and it just allows you to kind of get back uh, in the game very quickly on things. I actually have a little uh, a portable battery with the USB charger. I've actually reviewed it here. And uh, this is the USB-C port. And man, it just recharges really fast. And I think this is the microphone button or microphone hole right there, I believe. Yeah, I think that down here as well. So right there. I don't see any others, but as you can see here, there's a couple other buttons. I mean, I will get into those. I really, really like it. And the other thing is you can actually go up here to settings and kind of change the button control. So one of the things is this is kind of your home button and also live stream from it. And that'll turn it on and off. And then this is your, the little record red button right there is how you start recording. Now you can change the functionality on this. So what I have it set to is video recording. So if I tap it once, it's gonna start to video record just like that, and I, I can feel a buzz, and if I tap it again, it goes buzz buzz and stops recording, and that's what we get here, right? So, if I just show you what it did, <laughs> recorded one second, and I like that because this is a little LED light, and it blinks red when it's recording, and I've turned that off too, so you do have a lot of configurability, because what I do want to do is start recording, have this kind of be incognito, but then have a little red flashing light that's telling everyone you're recording probably saves a little battery too but that wasn't the point point. and uh you know you can also set this to be picture and then like a double tap to record video uh you can have it set one single tap to do what they call storybook mode i'll tell you tell you a little bit more about that later but um i've turned off the light and then set it to video record and i just like that and i took a lot of video on you know trips or in the in the in the at the auto show and the cool thing about it is uh there's something interesting going i can just reach here tap it i feel it buzz i know it's recording i hit tap again buzz buzz i know it's stopped recording so it's really good kind of um uh, you know tactile feedback and I don't have to worry about whether it actually is recording or not so that's really cool and it also has really good onboard storage you know I've been really impressed with that I'm obviously using up the whole bloody thing right now and uh, unfortunately that's <laughs> um, one of the things you'll have to offload it but uh, if I can show you here I'm using almost all of my I'm using like 21 gigabytes so that's really nice uh, onboard storage as you can see it's all video I will say that uh, we'll get to kind of this onboard storage and one of my uh, 
um, issues is that there's no expandable storage. I don't know where you'd put a slot for like an SD card. It would be nice if I could even record more with that, especially on the higher resolutions, but it is what it is. So you already got a preview of what I don't like. Uh, but the onboard storage, 22 gigabytes is great because a lot of them, you know, in fact, one of these things that I saw, you clip it to your glasses and you can record. I thought that was great, but it, it would record like seven 30 second clips. That's totally useless to me. I mean, it's great for maybe catching a, a moment or two, but most of the time you don't know what moment you want to record. So anyway, I will also say that transferring this, you can transfer these things to your phone. There is an app. It's really quite nice. And, uh, and you can control it and transfer it, but, uh, it's pretty slow because I think the transfer is via Bluetooth. And the issue with that is it's pretty slow transferring. Now, the cool thing, and what I do like, is that it'll actually say, do you want to transfer it like lightning fast? I don't remember what they call it, but uh, it'll change it over to Wi-Fi. This will create a Wi-Fi hotspot. The phone will connect to it, and then the transfers happen lickety split. That's pretty awesome. So I've offloaded the full 21 gigs to my phone here. I don't know, it took 10, 15 minutes maybe, but that, that was really great because there was no way that you're going to be able to kind of live with transferring large files via Bluetooth. So that was a pretty awesome little um, uh, feature that they built in there. It's kind of cool. This is something I like. I've never used it, but it kind of gives you like a digital stopwatch and it looks pretty cool. Totally in the side. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, the lanyard and that'll just kind of talk to you. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about um, the electronic image stabilization. So the lanyard is pretty thick. It is, as I, I kind of showed you a little earlier, it's adjustable here. So you can kind of uh, raise or lower the the front row kind of on your chest to where you want it. It's pretty nice. I, I use the clip too. And the clip, unfortunately, when you clip it to the top collar of your shirt, it's just aimed up too high. I get my chin in the ceiling view. So you really have to use the lanyard, uh, which kind of makes it look a little wonky. I wish, you know, there was almost a magnetic clip or something. I understand that can screw up the electronics where I could just clip it uh, with a magnet to my shirt or something like that because the lanyard is, I don't know, it, it looks, it kind of draws attention to it, but it does work and it's really quick. So that's okay. But the problem is besides the looking awkward is that the, the front row, because it's actually pretty heavy, it, it slaps a little bit, right? So as you're walking, you kind of get it kind of slapping on your chest. And so you get a lot of bounce, especially when walking. And uh, that's not particularly good. If it were braced with a magnet or a clip, that would be better. And the reason that it <coughs> slaps is just kind of the nature of it. But the problem is the electronic image stabilization and they have both electronic image stabilization and optical image stabilization. So this, this camera will move a little bit. The problem is the optical image stabilization, which is what I really want and what I was really hoping would work on video shooting only works on photo mode. I'm not really sure why that is or storybook mode too, but uh, you know, it seems like it would be great if that worked on the video mode. Now the electronic image stabilization works on video and it, it's better than having nothing, but uh, it's it's kind of frustrating knowing that you have an optical image stabilization that's just not being utilized. And what you'll see is, especially when I'm walking, uh, I get a lot of slaps or you get a lot of like um, jarring. You know, it's very, very visible every time I take a walk, which is, I guess, how pedometers actually work. Uh, the problem is I wish it were quite a bit smoother, you know. Now I get when I'm holding my iPhone or something, I've got the, the, the phone insulated from my body by my hand and my arm and all that, and this is right on the core of your body, but uh, it's, it's definitely noticeable. Now, the funny thing is they've um, talked about having like front row camera clothing, like a shirt with a pocket that you would tuck this in, or a baseball cap with a pocket that you would tuck this in. I think those would actually help improve that, but I haven't seen any of those come to market. I would love to see those because I would, I would definitely try out the shirt or the hat for sure uh, so that that's kind of that's kind of uh, the way it is now I will say when I'm shooting video and I know I'm shooting video and I know I'm moving around what I'll end up doing is kind of put my hand up to it kind of brace it on the sides and just kind of hold it in place even though it's around my neck like a pendant right and that that way I know it's kind of giving it a little bit more stability and I'm not having to worry about a swivel or slap and so you'll find yourself I think if you're using this you know, just kind of wearing it most of the time, but then when you do shoot, kind of holding it in place. At least that's what I did. Uh, the storybook mode is like you turn this thing on and it'll take photos every, I don't know, 30 seconds, 50 seconds, one minute, two minutes, whatever. And it will try to not duplicate them. So if it notices that the photo is substantially similar, it'll kind of skip it so you don't have like these long periods of you looking at the back of a bathroom stall. Now, I've never used this. Uh, I don't know that I'd be really interested in seeing my day in a minute 
kind of a deal, but it's there, and so uh, it's kind of interesting, but I think that would get old really, really, really quickly. Uh, the next thing that I don't like is low light color suffers, and um, as you might be well aware of, you know, because of the size of the CCD on these bad boys, that it's just one of those things where, um, you know, a very small sensor is not going to be super, um, super absorbent for light, and I don't know that I have some here, but here's uh, auto show video that I took and you know it's pretty well lit but it's gonna look a little darker and then I know in some places you know it's it's pretty dark and you know like some of these videos that I took on my trip to San Diego and the video is a little washed out you know it's just kind of the nature of it but you know it's like the nature of action cams low light video is not great and this one is no better uh, the thing that I also don't like is it's a little hard to know whether you're in fisheye or not mode and so if I kind of go up here to the camera uh, and I look at like wide angle you you get this so it's you kind of get this wide angle fisheye or you can just go regular angle and I'm not really sure by the the icons here what I, angle I'm in. So I think I'm in regular angle here, because, but it says like regular angle, turn on, and you would think, oh yeah, put me in regular angle. And now it says like wide angle. So it's not really clear which one you're in. Um, I like kind of the squared angle, but I feel like this is actually designed more for the, the wider angle, okay? So again, you tell me. You have to look in the instructions to figure out what you're in. Um, no expandable storage. I mentioned that. And uh, probably the biggest one, the biggest problem that I have with it is that it's $400. It's $399. Bucks. Like I said, I picked this one up. And it's just clearly the best wearable camera out there. But at $400, you can't just suck it up and buy one of these. And for that, you can get the, the Sony um, handy cams with optical image stabilization, optical image stabilization. I kind of muddled that. Uh, 4K resolution, really great outdoor camera, you know, and that one's going to be under 400 bucks, right? And so this one kind of serves that niche of having, you know, a wearable camera with you for kind of a little bit more subtle video taking. You know, if you want to tour a room, if you want to uh, capture over a long period of time without having a camera hand glued to your hand, whatever it might be, you, you don't know when the action's going to happen, like you're at your kid's game, I don't know. what. Like, you know, you're at the uh, water and air show or something, and you don't know when the cool video is going to be. So you just want to kind of capture everything. Um, you know, and hope that a fight breaks out, whatever, right? So uh, anyway, I, it's just kind of really nice. In the wearable camera market, this is the best one I've ever found, but you, you pay a substantial uh, premium for it. Now, what I would like to say is that, you know, in the end, uh, the front row camera clothes would be interesting. I'd really love to, to test those. Um, and like I said, there's a, supposedly a new one coming out called the Director, I believe. That would be really interesting. Uh, I would definitely use this as a body camera, you know, especially family events and capture fun moments for, you know, family and friends. You don't know when someone's going to laugh. You don't know when someone's going to cry or, you know, there's going to be a really awesome uh, clip that you, you know, a lot of times you're going to have to shoot hours of video for 30, 40 really cool seconds of clip. But it's really awesome for experiential recording. You know, you go to events. Uh, you, you want to record your day, like I said, maybe you're spending time with uh, kids or loved ones and you just don't know when those um, those awesome moments are going to happen. So really, really cool. I love it. Um, I said I wasn't going to use that at the beginning, but I really do like this. Um, and it's so close to being kind of like a perfect device. Uh, I wish if we could just get the stabilization issue down, uh, maybe, like I said, uh, a different type of clip to, to stabilize it a little bit better, to make it a little more subtle. But, man, uh, it's the best one out there, for sure. It's the best one out there. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, the Front Row Wearable Camera. Peter Von Panda out.